Lord of the Rings fans, new better, do better here. Yeah, as always, I'm back for another episode of Voices of Order. And of course, as always, with me is the lovely Callie Cosplay, the co-host, the wonderful boss, the lady of light, Callie herself. She's not dressed up today. I, I, Callie, Callie, you don't have any like ornaments on. I, I'm sure you probably have rings on and everything like that. Usually you're like cosplayed out, but you've you've toned it down today. Yeah, well, normally I have my new um, helm that I've been wearing, the Rainbow Rivendell, but yes. it doesn't it doesn't fit over my headphones, so it's it doesn't just... fit over your large head. That... <laughs> no, I'm just joking, just joking. It's getting bigger every time you introduce me so kindly. So you that's look lovely, no matter what you do. <laughs> you look lovely as always. Thank you so much for all you do. Today we have some special guests on the Voices of Order, and we are doing like a crossover episode. Like, this is—is is this our first crossover episode? It is. It might not be our first, but it—it it might be. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll say it's our first. I know we did Greek mythology on episode, but this is really gonna gonna stir some shit up because we're doing Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Star Wars is fire. I love Star Wars. I'm not a super low expert on Star Wars like I am Lord of the Rings, but I have with me some experts. And one of my favorite people on TikTok is Star Wars Tia. I literally love all of their content. So excited that they get to be here with me. Star Wars Tia, what's up? Hi, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I'm so honored to have, you know, to be here with you guys. Um, I'm excited for this conversation. It's going to be so awesome. It's going to be so much fun. So thank you for having me. Uh, no thank doubt, so no much. doubt. And of course, the man, we got the man himself, Luke from the Podwans podcast. What's up, my guy? What up, new better? What's going What's on? Up? Thanks chilling, for man. having me on. This is actually like, I, 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 Shit, can we cuss on here? You cuss can say it. whatever you All want. Right. All right. I shit you not. I shit you not. Last week I was taught I tweeted out on, on our uh podcast uh Twitter. I was like, if anybody wants me on for to talk fantasy or to talk Lord of the Rings, please for the love of God do it because I can't do a fantasy <laughs> podcast right now because I'm too damn busy. So Yo, I'm facts, glad man. you guys gave me the chance to finally talk about Tolkien because Tolkien is my second franchise. I love Lord of the Rings. And uh, yeah, thanks for man, having me on. That's awesome, man. <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves and let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, where on TikTok or Twitter or wherever, wherever it may be. But let them know where they can find you and your wonderful content. So Star Wars Tia, let them know. All right. So um, on TikTok and on Twitter, you can find my handle, same as here, as Star Wars Tia. And on Instagram, you can find me as Kari, K-A-R-I Skywalker, all together. So all right. those are my three main platforms. All right, you, Lou. Uh, hi, guys. I am one third of the Pod Ones podcast. Uh, we are a Star Wars podcast. Uh, we are, are th obviously, because Pod Ones, that, that kind of funny <laughs> play, play on words. Um, uh, but we are on TikTok at the Pod Ones podcast, uh, Twitter at Pod Ones podcast, and Instagram at the Pod Ones Pod. I always have a, <laughs> I always have trouble like thinking of the three because they're so different. I like try <laughs> to get them all the same, but they just aren't. Um, we're on uh, YouTube. Uh, New Beta was actually New Beta and Tia uh, have actually been on our channel for Lord of the Rings reactions. So if you want to yeah. go check out their stuff, uh, yeah, go check out our YouTube channel. We're growing like a weed. We're uh, at six hundred nineteen subs. Yeah. So, wow. nice. uh, yeah. so we're 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 getting closer to that thousand. So uh that's our that's our main goal. So uh yeah, again, thanks for having me on. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, man. And make sure you guys follow Voices of Art on YouTube and Spotify and yes. um, you know, saying Google Podcasts. One I day subscribe. Kelly's gonna figure out how to put it on to uh Apple. She's supposed to do that already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, man. So let's 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 jump right into it. We got Star Wars and we got Lord of the Rings. First, uh, they're both like huge. They're both like the fans are like obsessive about both realities, both uh, you know worlds. What do you guys think about the fandom as they are right now? There's a lot of uh, you know I'm saying people <laughs> coming into the fandom making it very toxic, but then there's also 
great people who are defending the true fans who I, I call the true fans because they're not toxic. They want everybody to enjoy it. They don't, they, you know, they don't care about people's race or mm -hmm. anything like that. So to me, that, those are the true fans. Everybody gets to enjoy this stuff. What do you guys think on both ends? Cause, cause I know Tia and, and you, like you said, that's your favorite. Uh, your second favorite is Lord of the Rings. So you guys have experience with both as do I, but I'm not like as fully delved in, into the Star Wars. Like I can escape the hate in Star Wars cause I'm just a casual fan. Whereas- yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're diving into Lord of the Rings, so you're kind of seeing both icky sides oh, yeah. right now. But then yeah, you're seeing both good sides because you know I have people like like me defending. defending exactly. Them. There you go. Like you and Kelly, you definitely. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. You yeah, guys, you guys, and and Don and yeah, absolutely. And Chris, Alex, Emily, like Did you see us. Uh, Don in, yes. in Wizard Way Chris. We want to make sure we yes. shout out Wizard Way Chris because she designed the shirt that Don got. Uh, that that got Don made and the, the Hobbits purchased the shirt. I know, but they didn't even tell Don they were going to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. That's the just Hobbits. how cool. That's just that's how awesome. cool that the community can be. And the funny thing is, is and, and and Tia probably has had a lot more experience than me. Um, uh, just having to deal with the toxicity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. It's very unfortunate because both fandoms are very alike in that in that negativity. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they are both made by predominantly white males, mm -hmm. and that's and that's been the demographic of these franchises for 40, 50 plus years. Yeah, and they are trying to go against the grain, which I I I applaud them for, because, like I was saying before we started recording. I want people I, I don't want characters to look like me anymore. I want more inclusivity. And that's what we're getting with that's what we got with Reva. That's what we got with Tala. That's what we're getting with the books that I mentioned earlier in the High Republic. You're getting LGBTQ uh plus uh that their that community is getting represented. I just want more representation. Absolutely. And when people are like so pushing back on it. it it just reminds me they're not they're they're not thinking in the same way that everybody else is and mm -hmm. it's sad because everybody should feel welcome in a community and and not belittled for the way they look the way they act the way who they are that that shouldn't that shouldn't be acceptable in any fandom yeah. so with being in the star wars community and now kind of being plugged into the Tolkien community with you guys, like Star Wars has really, really got me uh, like it has really taught me like how to pinpoint uh, toxic people. Oh, absolutely. You know, because, you know, mm -hmm. they'll 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 have one talking point. Right. And you'll be like, oh, where'd you get that from? Oh, I got it from YouTube. Oh, well, you do realize that most YouTube channels are only like they're like your clickbait. Mm -hmm. they, they tell you certain things. You're only hearing one side of the story. So it's just you, 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 you know when to call out bullshit and you know, like, who they are as a person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just seeing that in the Tolkien universe now, because now they've they have a they have a product like with the Rings of Power that is now is now live. And I feel like that was hard to you didn't really hear about the toxicity in the Tolkien community until just recently. Because the last thing we had was The Hobbit. The Hobbit, yeah. yeah. And that's it. Like, with Star Wars, we've been getting constant stuff for the last 10 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, now yeah. that you're starting to see it, you know, I know how to deal with it. And and it, there's good sides of, of every fandom. And I wish that we would see more of that mm -hmm. instead of the uh, less of the toxicity. Yeah, which yeah. is it's, it's weird. And, and I don't even get it because... At the end of the day, the in the inclusive, however you pronounce it, being inclusive doesn't harm anybody. It's not harming anybody. It's not taking away from uh, white characters or male characters or you know all the characters that we do know that have been prevalent over the years, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not taking away from that. It's it's just giving space for other cultures and other um, you know people of color and um, you know. Uh, sexual orientations and mm -hmm. you know even the disabled whatever the case may have you 
it, it's just giving yeah. space for them. And then it's just representation across the board, more like, much like the world. And then the world can see itself in these fantasies. And it's like, wow, everybody's in here. This is going to be lit. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? But they don't see it that way. They feel like they're losing something, which is weird to me. Like, what are you losing? You're not losing anything. You already have that. Like your established characters aren't even getting changed. Most, for the most part, it's not even race swapping. It's just new characters that are popping mm-hmm. up for the most part. Like, you know, occasionally there's a race swap here or there, but for the most part, they're mad at new characters that like literally could be any race. Like they just want to be control the narrative of, of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's 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 really weird. And it's like, it yeah. says more about their uh, insecurity than anything. And, and I just really want to give them a hug and say, it's going to be okay. Like, <laughs> it's going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, I'm, it's, it's, but, it's, I mean, people, fun. it's so it's so interesting because it's like, like I said before, like it, the demographic for Star Wars and Lord of the Rings have been, has been pinpointed at white men for 50 years. So it's like, that's, that's what they think is the norm. And now mm-hmm. that the newer generation is, is, is forward thinking, they don't know how to deal with that. They've been yeah. sunk in their ways for so long that it's almost like that it's either shit or get off the pot. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're not going to do either. Cause they don't care. Yeah. They so. don't care. And the thing is that like, um, you know, like uh, since it, it most of the uh, the movies and, and, and the storylines have been predominantly white male and stuff. Mm-hmm. Us, you know, all the other, um, like all of us that are not obviously white or male, we, why is it that we are able to find something to relate that we can relate to these characters, exactly. but now all of a sudden they can't relate to them, to, to, exactly. to yo, a black character or yo, LGBTQ character. If they don't have, yo, you, yo, you said it. You said, Cal, make sure you make a clip out of what she just said, because I have to relate to Luke Skywalker and find and, and it and it doesn't bother me to relate to Luke. I just find I had to relate to Luke Skywalker. Yeah, like, he's a great guy. Like, I don't like damn it, he's white. I can't I can't get with that. Like it doesn't yeah. happen. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it, I just relate to him because he's brave, he's 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 confused in the beginning, but he wants to get to his revenge, he wants to follow in the steps of his dad. Who doesn't want to be like their dad? Especially when you hear your dad is ill. Like you, you, you want you like when you find out your dad is a jackass. You're like, ah, like yo, like <laughs> all those yeah. things. Are, you relate to him. Yeah. I don't have to relate yeah. to his color. Like it has nothing to do with it. Like it has yeah. absolutely nothing to do with his character arc. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand it. And you said it so perfectly. And thank you for that. You know what I'm saying? I kind of wish I would have said that, and I would have made a TikTok about it. But uh, <laughs> that was go perfect. ahead. You could do it. No, no, no. I can't jack his, I can't jack his swag. I can't do you like that. But that was dope. But that's the, but it's the, that that's the reality of things. It's like why you know it and that's again that's weird. Like why, <laughs> which is why we always come with the conclusion that then it's race based. Yeah. And they're like, now why are you saying it's racism? Like someone because... that has a problem with the, the 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 color of the person or the skin because you, how is it that you know if you can relate to them, why is that? You're you're not looking beyond his skin tone then. Yeah. Yep. And, and I, I want to point out that for the most part, people of color don't do that. They don't like hate on they don't be like hating. Like they'll point it out if it's brought up to us, like you know what I'm saying? Like, oh if racism is brought up, we'll be like, well, these characters have been getting race swapped for years. Why is that? But we don't, we typically just d- deal with it. We've been dealing with it for years and it just is what it is. Like Superman's white, Batman's white, Aquaman's white. Like we just, it is what it is, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, the thing is just... that, you know what it is that we like, we just, again, we were also, you know, in that uh, like conformity of, okay, this is the norm, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Um, so we went along with it. But that's the, 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 the issue was that since we didn't talk, you know, speak out speak back up. then, now that we're speaking up, it's like, whoa, 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 what's whoa, whoa. going on? What are Stay you in your place. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Why do you need yeah. representation? You know, it's like a big deal now. You know what's going to be great, Tia? Andor. Oh, my Andor. God. Andor. Andor. Diego Luna. Like, we get... So Andor, we have, we've had, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Kelly, I don't know. And, and, and totally Andor. lost. <laughs> yeah, and I'm okay. like, yeah, so Andor. Andor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Andor is the first, you know, Latino-based show that's gonna come out for Star Wars. Oh, yes. cool. Luna, the main character, he's from Mexico. Nice. Yep. And um, 
he was one of the main protagonists in the movie Rogue One. So this show is a prequel to that movie. Yep. Nice. You it's, understand? Yeah. And Word. this one, this I think this is going to be one of more one of the most like um, inclusive, inclusive like uh, show because yeah. we're going to, you know, it's going to be all types of people in this and stuff. And we've already been saying it, like we're preparing ourselves because it, if they acted like the toxic fans acted the way they did when Kenobi show came out and they saw a, a black woman, you know, being a main lead in the show, it was it was a mess. It was yeah. a complete mess. Yeah, yeah it was. And, and the funny part about it is that so Star Wars Celebration, which which Callie is like the mecca of conventions for Star Wars. It's all Star Wars. It's like San Diego Comic Con on okay. crack in my opinion (laughs) um but like so they showed so they decided to do the two 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 episode premiere at star wars celebration during a panel they announced it and not even a week after celebration was the news that that moses ingram was getting uh racist stuff thrown at her and it, it it's so sad because she saw the people that enjoy Star Wars for what it is and they pour their whole heart into it no matter what skin color no matter what what representation you are they're going to love you for who you are because you are in Star Wars you know and I feel like the, it was so awesome to, for her to see that because then when it on the back end she knew exactly who the people were that were doing it yeah. it couldn't have been anybody at the convention it couldn't have been the like for the majority of the point part. Yes, we're going to have our problems with the franchise, but what fan base does not have a problem with the franchise? That is it that, you know, like there's things I might not necessarily love the way they took the direction of the sequel trilogy, but I'm not going to make it my whole personality to ruin somebody else's enjoyment of said trilogy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and and that was like for what what it was for me for the prequels, because yeah. the prequels were my Star Wars. And now seeing those movies get beloved now after getting so much hate. It, yeah, I remember it, when they got hate. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Kelly, like, I'm going to tell you something. If you liked the prequels when they came out, Whoa. you were stupid and you did not love Star Wars. And <laughs> you ruined you know? everything. And George Lucas ruined Star Wars with those movies. Like oh, he destroyed, but he destroyed my childhood. <laughs> oh God! Basically, what the what the you know those toxic Lord of the Rings fans are saying about the show—that's what they said about the prequels. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this is not canon, and and this is the this story is not real. And they ruined the story. Like go, it was. Really, go really back bad. to Legends and 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 have Luke Skywalker be so strong that he can take down a wormhole. Come on, <laughs> get the hell out of here. Because as a, okay, so now we gotta explain like canon and legend yes so yes. canon is basically the star what the story that george lucas wrote, yeah right his story yeah legends is basically um books that were written by fans of star wars that george said okay you want to make up your own stories that's cool go ahead you know you can write the, the book but they're not part of the main you know of the canon of the main storyline so it's so like a lot of people... fan fiction or so it's so it's like, um, so when they say legends, right, um, there's a quote in the Rebels uh, show that Ahsoka says. Um, Kelly, do you know who Ahsoka is? You know who yes. Ahsoka is, right? Yes, oh, okay, I do. Okay. Yes, cosplayer. Right, right. Sorry, right. cosplayer right. knowledge. Well, Kelly's face this whole here. time has been like. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Kelly. There you go. We got We got, we got, we got one. That, we was the goal. that was the goal is to get her. Um, so Ahsoka says uh, there's a little bit of truth in legends. She says that in Rebels. Uh, season two, episode four. I think it's when they go back into the temple on Lothal. Wow, um, you're a nerd. I know. You're really a nerd. I know. Man. I don't get any bitches. <laughs> this is what you sound like when you're talking about Lord of the Rings. Oh, hey, no. Yo, yo, chill. Yo, I sound like you sound cool. Yo. So, so they came out. So they decided. So after Disney bought Star Wars, right? Everything yes. that uh, George is. So it used to be called G Cannon. So before Disney bought it, it was G Canon or George's Canon. Oh, okay. and then you had Legends because he didn't he didn't really uh, he was like, OK, yeah, you guys can do it because I'll make money on the back end. But none of that stuff it counts in my canon, you know. Okay. Um, so there were books like like Obi-Wan Kenobi, which obviously is Legends because they just went over the timeline in the show. 
Yeah. And then you have Darth Plagueis, which is a story about um, uh, a, it's, it's, it's a story that leads up to a Fant- to Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. And it's about Darth Sidious or Emperor Palpatine's master and yes. how he is, is trying to escape life and, and all of these things. And so these are these are legends. This is what we like to call legends. Okay. Everything probably. So I have on my shelf. I wish I could just grab all my books and just. <laughs> so, like everything, so the way I have it. So the way I have it right now, I have all of my books in chronological order. So all of them on the top, except for which I believe, Tia, you need to read this damn book. Yo, yo Luke. The, oh, yeah, I know. Luke, I, I got you. I got you. It. I got to wait for her to understand it. I'm going okay. to equate it to Lord of the Rings for her. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what they're saying is Legends is like the book of Lost Tales. Okay. Like it's not technically canon. It's a bunch of stories that fit within the, star, uh, the Lord of the Rings universe, but they're technically not. 100% canon you can't really go off of the book of lost tales unfinished tales you can yes but okay. lost the book of lost tales lost you can't tales. hold Morgoth's everything ring or... exactly stuff okay. like that as 100% canon like but shadow of war do. like the shadow of war games yes oh yeah okay so that yeah. would be video game form but tia refuses to read this damn novelization because <laughs> it's the best novelization of a movie which is my one of my favorite movies star wars revenge of the sith this book damn near makes me cry every single time wishing that mm-hmm. this this book should have been on screen there's a lot of things that are left out in the movie that were put in this in this uh book because matthew stover literally sat down with george and was like what are you doing what's the script what does it look like and he got it straight from george's mind and he put a lot of, there's a lot of canon knowledge that is taken from this book and put into canon different into different stories where they reference this book. Oh, so nice. this book as a legends fan, like it's not the number one, but like, it's a great adaptation into it in, from the, from the movie. Yeah. Tia. <laughs> read it. No, the reason why I haven't read it, I have it here is because Anakin slash Vader is like my favorite character. Same and here, I'm bestie. Very, and, and I and I torture myself all the time exactly. by reading it. Okay. And and that this is a character that I'm very emotionally invested <laughs> in. And that book is it's it's gonna tear me apart because it's like the movie was sad. This thing is like 10 oh, times sadder. It's, it's, what, it's, what, how it's, they do uh, tell the story in that book. See, the so one that's problem, why I read it. <laughs> so the reason, so the one problem I will have with George, and this is this is not to like this is not trash George hour, but he it, Bless that man. Great, great, like, world building guy. Can set up everything, right? The third movie, he completely sidelines Padme Amidala, who is arguably supposed to be the main antagonist throughout the the, the trilogy, mm-hmm. okay? Sidelines her because she is pregnant. Takes mm-hmm. out a lot of the things of her create, helping, starting to create the rebellion, starting to put the groundwork down and he cut it all yeah, like that movie could have yeah, yeah, yeah rushed in and th- 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 that's my opinion i'm sorry if you no if you no no it. no you're absolutely right knew about it you're absolutely yeah. right they the, did the way not vader yeah. fell it seemed rushed and it was like this is yes. a little uh, pushed i feel like it's pushed yes. too much yeah. so, if, if we had more it would have so what helps that is the clone wars yes the seven no. seasons of the Clone Wars yes. helps that relation because I, my biggest thing in Star Wars was Obi-Wan is talking to Luke in the fourth movie, right? Your father was, was a great pilot and he was a good friend. Where is that friendship ever seen in the prequel trilogy besides Revenge of the Sith? Mm-hmm. You, get, you get Anakin as a young boy just meeting Obi-Wan. Okay. Mm-hmm. Qui Gon dies. He goes to Obi Wan as like a, a a like he told I have to do this. Not that Obi Wan wanted to do it. He had to do it. He did it out, out of, of a sense of the, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And so then you get this ten year gap where they have this relationship. Then you see Attack of the Clones, and the whole dynamic is, oh, he's holding me back. This and that. Obi Wan's fault. Anakin's not ready to do these things. 
and then you jump another th- two years, two, two and a half years, three, three years. Yeah, three years. Mm-hmm. Three years. And they're they're buddy buddy. So you get the so you seven, don't get that, that in yeah, between. You don't yeah. you don't except get that in between. Wars. And except for Clone Wars. So basically the Clone Wars show <laughs> it's to it's doing it's filling in those gaps the same way that now Rings of Power is gonna fill in the gap for the second eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Look at like you, Tia. Okay, Tia. Look, look at him making go. connections. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. There we go. See, we're, we're connecting A and B. Like we're home. gonna get them back. We're gonna get them back because after they're done talking about that, we're gonna talk about Baron and Luthien, and we're gonna. We're gonna, let them know about <laughs> Baron, and Baron, we're gonna Baron, and Luthien. I love that story. <laughs> that's gonna get that's, into that's one of my favorites in all of the Summerillion. Yes, nice, yes, nice. Yeah. I'm glad you know about the Summerillion. Oh yeah. I, I like I was telling Kelly. I literally did not. So my fandom of Lord of the Rings was actually started by the movies. So Peter Jackson films. Okay. That's what got me into Lord of the Rings as a kid. And I have always, and I, and I didn't say anything about this as a kid, I had it in my mind that I could create a universe where the clone wars was happening (laughs) at the same time as the original trilogy of the Lord of the Rings. Nice. And that somehow Sauron was a Sith Lord. (laughs) <laughs> and I mean, it tracks, though. Oh, it does. And and guess what? Saruman is a fallen Jedi who was mm. sent to Mordor, who was sent to Middle Earth from a distress beacon, and he never got off. You really thought about this, huh? Oh, oh dude, <laughs> dude. I tell you what, like the battles, like they're great in the movies, but put clone troopers with elves in Helm's Deep. Having droids with 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 Urukai, like in in General Grievous and Obi Wan, think of Minas Tirith yeah. times ten. Like that okay. battle would have been holy <laughs> shit. Just like <laughs> the the nerdgasm going on That's would like just be my, oh my, my god. Both of, both of oh. the story. <laughs> I told so I was like I was telling my girlfriend she's she's a teacher but she writes some things. I was like, can we just can you just help me write this fanfic because I feel like. <laughs> I feel like it would be so amazing and, and people would lose their minds. But I, I I've always loved these two and I feel like they 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 do coincide quite a like it's very possible if you wanted to, you could have them be in the same universe. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. It and and be, it sounds like it tracks too, and and seeing how you know, even when they go on indoor and you're seeing how the Ewoks live. It's yes. it, they could go to another planet and it could completely be that time period in the Lord of the Rings could be going on and it would yep. still track because every yeah. planet is different in Star Wars and every it's just so- in the outer rim or yeah. the unknown regions. Unknown and everything like that. So so T, are you familiar with Baron and Luthien? See, I'm not. That's why I want to explain to everybody that I am a movie She's fan. A, I became a fan. fan of the movies. I haven't read the books. Um, and any knowledge that I have gained is from Nubeta, from you know, uh uh, Don and you know uh, Annex Emily and now you know the rest of the Lord of the Rings community uh, when they talk and stuff. So that's how I've been getting my not extra knowledge now of everything else, okay. which is how I uh, um, also means that I'm new to the fandom as well. Oh, but it's um, awesome because we get to mm-hmm. have these open conversations. Yeah, we get no, to see absolutely. what you think about stuff. You'll get to mm-hmm. see all this cool stuff. So we'll try to give you a quick summary. The three of us will try yeah. to give you a quick summary of Baron Luthien because. As a whole, it is the greatest story within the Silmarillion. Yes. Okay. Yep. Some people Absolutely. might argue the Torin Jerombar story, but fuck Torin. I hate him. <laughs> oh, oh boy. If you listen to our last podcast episode, you will know that very well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right. So we just like in um, so you watch the Rings of Power and you know that uh Morgoth destroyed the two trees. He did that with the help of a giant spider. He he uh, the war, the elves went to war against him. But what you don't know is that he stole these three holy jewels known as the Silmarils. They possess the light of those three jewels. They're, they're, think about the ring on crack. That's these mm-hmm. three jewels. Everybody wants them. Everybody loves them. Morgoth puts them in his crown. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three. And he wears this crown and he stays in his fortress and he just sends out armies and it's, they're constantly going back and forth uh, with the elves and they're having a war because the elves come over to Middle Earth just to get them back, but the Noldor elves. Now in Middle Earth are already the Sindar elves, which have their own kingdom known as Doriath. The Sindar elves are led by an elf named Thingol. 
Thingol is the king of the Sindar elves. He is the lord of Balarian. He is the ruler of Balarian. The Noldor, who are higher elves, come over and they have their king and they set up kingdoms and they coexist and they they get along kind of, but you know, they have their problems. But it's it's a little rocky relationship. But they they get along for the most part. Um, Thingol is married to Melian the Maya. So think about a Sauron. He, how he's a Maya and he's so powerful. He's like a demigod. He is an angelic being. Melian is also a Maya and just as powerful as Sauron. She is ridiculously strong and beautiful. And she falls in love with Thingol and Thingol falls in love with her. Mm -hmm. So it's a marriage of these two different beings for the first time, a, a elf and a, a Maya. And okay. they have a child and the child's name is Luthien. And when okay. I tell you, they literally don't say this like one, one time, two times, three. They say it like a hundred times. She is the most beautiful being in the world. The 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 of any elf ever, any children of Luvatar, any elf man, woman, whatever. She is the most beautiful, Luthien. And she is also a powerhouse. Yeah. yeah her father yeah. is a high elf. And mm -hmm. her mother is a uh, Maya and it's whatever they, it's ridiculous. Yep. And she's, you know, considered an elf because her father's the king of the elves. Melian stays and, and is, becomes the queen. So they're more mm -hmm. like considered as elves, but okay. they know she's, Question, she's the princess. Better. What's up? Do, uh, does she lose her powers or is she forever a Maya? Like, it's not the, like the whole, like how Arwen has to give up <laughs> her... Yeah, like Arwen has to give up her mortality or whatever. Or she I think she just mortality. loses. I think she just gains mortality, but okay. doesn't lose her power because they, they okay. remember the seven sons wouldn't dare attack her. Yeah, that's right. Even that's after right. they just yep. would not attack her. And but why why did that happen? Because she got with an elf. Um. So I'll explain. So she's born and she's the most beautiful and she's the princess of uh, a kingdom known as Doriath, which is the Cinder mm -hmm. Elves rule. And the Noldor elves live like little north and their kingdoms are like protecting the world from Morgoth. They're the ones who like fight Morgoth more constantly. And mm -hmm. Melian, the, the, the Maya, surrounds Doriath with an invisible force field known as the Girdle of Melian. So no evil can enter it. Like just, she's that powerful where her whole kingdom can be surrounded by this force field yeah. where nothing can enter it. No, no, no evil can enter it. Mm -hmm. Now, there are men that live in this world, and the men that do live in this world are known as the dying. And there's three different groups. There's the uh, the the men of Bayor, the house of Bayor. Then there's the house of Hador, and then there's the house of Halad. So uh, of these groups, the men of uh, Bayor they live right above Doria, actually, like in the north. Like they're separated by like some mountains, a valley, and then they live in the north. And they live there, and and they helping they're helping the elves. They help the Noldor elves fight against Morgoth. Mm -hmm. So what happens is a great battle breaks out called the Dagor Bragalak. Yep. The Dagor Bragalak is the battle of sudden flame. Now, up until this point, the elves had been winning all the wars. They won every battle. There are five great battles. The elves won three of them, the first three. First, second, and third, they washed Morgoth. They, mm -hmm. they, Morgoth couldn't do shit. And they keep him pinned in his tower for hundreds of years. He can't do anything. All he can do is they can't get in the tower, uh, the, the the fortress of Angband. So he just keeps breeding armies, breeding, breeding, breeding. And he finally comes up with a great idea. He has a dragon named Glaurun and he bursts rivers of flame from the mountains where he lives at and it runs down and all the people defending it get killed. All the elves get killed yeah. and then he goes to war and they can't withstand this. So the elves actually lose. And the men that are helping him in Dor Loman, the, the house of Bayor, are fucked up too. They get hurt and they, they, they're they having trouble too. And immediately after this, Morgoth is on the offensive now. He's out. He's roaming around, messing shit up. And I hope I hope you're following. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm following. So, <laughs> Mor Morgoth is doing this. Now he's like trying to find all the men and the elves and kill them and everything like that. But there's this pesky group of men in Dor Loman, right above Doriath in that like above the mountains, above uh, the valley, like in this place called mm -hmm. um, uh, Dorthonian, and they just evade him. And there's like 12 of them, and they keep evading him. And he's pissed. He can't get to them. So what happens is he sends 
his greatest servant to go after them. He sends Sauron. Sauron. Sauron gets the job done immediately. He, I'm not, I'm not going to. There's, there's stories within stories there, but just uh -huh. know they're done for. Sauron gets it done, uh -huh. except one of them escapes, and his name is Baron. He is related to the. His, his father becomes the, the Lord of Dolomen. So when he dies, he becomes the Lord of Dolomen, even though he's like the last one. But yeah. he's very brave. And he's for years, he ev evades them and he fights and he's and he's just by himself, and he, but he won't leave until Morgoth sends Sauron again to go get him. And Sauron is just a goon and he has to flee. He has to escape because he can't withstand the forces of Sauron. So then mm -hmm. he goes south. When he goes south, he goes past the mountains, terrible journey. He goes past the valley, terrible, terrible journey. The valley of dreadful death is crazy. It's, mm -hmm. it's awful. And then somehow he goes into Doria, the kingdom of the elves. He goes through the force field. Nobody's supposed to be able to get through this force field. But he goes through it. He's fated to be able to go through it. And when he's there, he sees Luthien, the most beautiful, the princess of the elves, yeah. dancing on a hill. And he falls in love with her. And the story goes, they fall in love with each other. And this is the first union of elves and men, and it's not taken lightly by her father, no nope. Pingle. No, oh, and wow. He does not, he no, does not, not want happy. this to happen. He's Daddy like, very, he does not like this. So he's like, How dare you put my daughter? Da, 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 da. You know, they get, eventually get found out and they fall in the deepest love. Like, there's no love deeper than this in all mm -hmm. of Lord of the Rings. Yep. And literally, what he does is it's super fucked up. Oh yeah! Absolutely. What does he do, Callie? The dad? <laughs> yes, the yeah. dad. The daddy-in-law <laughs> says that he won't give away his daughter's hand unless Beren performs this impossible task of getting impossible. a Silmaril from yeah. the crown of. Mo uh, uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so, he's like, so um, so imagine, imagine if you your of husband wants you to marry. That. Imagine your husband is trying to marry you and your father says, you have to go to hell and get a toenail from the devil and then you can marry <laughs> That's like exactly, that's, oh, yeah, basically that's literally, what he's saying. That's, that's literally, yeah. Like for Star Wars terms, that's like, that's like, uh, I mean, if you want to take the forbidden love, uh, the closest thing to it would be Anakin and Padme. Yeah. And kind of that secret, if you think about it from like a moral standpoint, Anakin has to keep that inside of him. Yeah. Whereas Baron and Luthien is more out outward. It's the, uh -huh. the, the conflict is more outward instead of inward. Yeah. 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 Um, that's how I would explain explain okay. Baron and Luthien in Star Wars terms. Because yeah, it's, yeah. it is a for, it is a forbidden love in the beginning. And then once events happen in that story, which I uh, I'll let with, with <laughs> let these two explain it because i mean I, I can basically give you the t the, the 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 shorter version but like it's it it, it is so well done it's and amazing. the fact that tolkien got the inspiration from his wife mm -hmm. and that he is Baron, and, yeah and, and his oh wife is yeah, it's on their grave baron yep. and is on yep grave. it is yeah oh, it is that's so where he, crazy yeah, that, yeah that's, that. that's so cute. Yeah, that's like, that's that's the you have one to hear Tolkien day. talk about Luthien. Oh, the it's fairest of all the children of the world. Like what every single time they say he say he says it like with such reverence, like you're like, that's this girl yeah. gotta be the most beautiful yes. person ever. Like this is crazy. Yeah. So sorry to cut you off. So I just I'm gonna go through the whole thing. We're gonna go long on this podcast, can we? Got <laughs> I was going to um, say, maybe we should leave it there so that there's some mystery for T. Nah, I don't want no mystery. I want to tell T. I want to tell <laughs> okay, T. You want to tell the whole story. All right. <laughs> so Baron is like, you know, he doesn't want to be like a punk. So he's like, I, yeah, I could do that. Of course. Yeah, no problem. Like, yeah. Because he has pride. <laughs> of course. And, and as soon as he walks out, he's just like, shit, the fuck did I do? Like, yeah. <laughs> In no fact, way. he mocks him. He says, for a little price, do you, elven kings king sell, sell their daughters? daughters. <laughs> for, you know, oh, that's, that's that's Anakin Skywalker oh, esque. That, that's the Skywalker that big move. Talk. Big that's, talk. Yeah, big that's, talk. As soon as he leaves, he's like, "What the hell was I saying?" Like, what? Yeah. So, fortunately for him, and this is the part that's going to connect you to the Rings of Power. Yes. Fortunately for him, during the Bragalak, Galadriel's brother Finrod 
was in the war that you see him fighting the orcs mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Okay. And he's about to lose and about to die. And the men that help him and save his life are the same 12, or well, probably more at that time, were the same men, Barahir and his companions, saved Finrod's life during that. And he literally is so thankful, he gives him his ring, his ring, about his household it. token, and gives it to him and swears an oath to be there for him or anybody in his family's uh, time of need, anytime. Yep. They like he swears an oath to do that. And Finrod is a high Noldoran elf, and he is the king. He is a king. His father is the king of the Noldor in Valinor. Yep. Vadril is his sister, and his uncle is the literally the king of the elves, and he is the king of Nargothrond, his own kingdom. So he is somebody special. Yeah, and he's yeah. Very powerful. And he he gives them this oath that anybody, you or anybody in your family ever need me, I got you. Same ring that Aragorn has in the yes. Fellowship of the Ring. Yes. Oh, this baron, wow. This Baron and Luthien is very close. In, in retrospect, both Arwen and Aragorn are are connected to Baron and Luthien. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're, I saw that. Because Arag- they did, in the movie, they said that Aragorn is like half, yes. like he this has is the second. Elf, the a lot of people think that they are, re- I'm, correct me if I'm wrong. Well, Arwen is literally the second coming of Luthien. Okay, Luthien. okay. So that's where it was. Because people were like, this is the second coming of Baron and Luthien. In a uh, sense, it, yes. In a sense, yes. And and it's very important because Bar- the, the Ring of Battle here Last all the, the third age until so that's, the third age that's that's, that's passed down wow. all the way to that aragorn has that same ring aragorn wears it and yes. it's funny in the movies you see aragorn had it in the book aragorn gives it to um arwen yes so instead of the necklace thing that's made up for the movies he gives arwen the ring of barra here and yes. arwen, nobody mad about that <laughs> yeah because it because i don't know it's, it's it doesn't a lot change, of people don't know that it doesn't a lot change of people that don't much know that. Yeah. No, no, I know. I'm just being physician. You know, she's being, yeah. So, Lord, I know, you know what she was doing. <laughs> Baron, Baron has this ring because his father died and his father had the ring and he took the ring and he goes and he's like, I don't know what to do. I was just talking shit. I don't know where to go. And he remembers <laughs> that that Finrod has his oath and he goes to Nargothrond and asks for his help. Finrod is a G. Finrod is the greatest elf ever. He's not the greatest, the strongest. He's not, but as far as like things that being a, a person of his word, mm-hmm. deeds, everybody loves him. He is the greatest elf, period. He stands up like a man and and, and, and says, I'm going to help you, even though the whole kingdom wasn't trying to help. He only finds 10 people that will go with him and they go off to go get a silver room for Morgoth's crown, impossible task. So they, they go and they disguise themselves as orcs so they can travel through the land freely. Because remember, Morgoth is winning now. So Morgoth yeah. has these lands. And yeah. Sauron has taken over a tower that guards the Western Pass. And Sauron is that guy, as I told you. So when they try to go past the tower, Sauron's like, but this, you here. this ain't right. Like, <laughs> they, they didn't check in. What's going on? It does not slide. Yeah. Sauron and Fidrod have a fight, a sorcery battle of the ages. And it is crazy. And it's awesome. And Sauron ends up winning and capturing all of them. Sauron puts them in prison. Now, mm-hmm. this is how um, this is how Finrod dies. So this is what Galadriel is talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. He he doesn't know exactly who they are, but he knows that one of them is a powerful elf, and he's like, I'm going to figure out who you are. So mm-hmm. I'm going to send a wolf, a werewolf, to kill all of you companions until somebody tells me who that guy is because I know he's powerful and I want to mm-hmm. know what they were doing. He sends a wolf, kills all the companions, and then he, the wolf, he finally sends a wolf to kill Baron. Baron's about to die because Sauron doesn't care about Baron. He just cares yeah, about yeah. Finrod because he knows yeah. Finrod gave him a battle. He's like, this guy is powerful. Who is this guy? Sauron sends the wolf to kill Baron. Finrod literally uses all his strength, breaks free of his bonds. Like, just man break free of his bonds with all his strength, fights the werewolf with his hands and teeth, and Kills the werewolf, but the werewolf kills him in the process as well. And he uh-huh. dies in his own tower that he built. Because he built that tower to protect the Western Pass. And yeah. it's so sad. 
Luthien ends up getting help from this giant dog helping um, named Huan. It's now we're going to probably stop because it's going to get very, <laughs> very confusing <laughs> after that. But that's how Finrod dies. And that's the connection there. And then we'll, we'll get into later on another podcast about the rest of it. And it's epic. It's beyond epic. This is just I love those. See, there's, I love those little stuff. And I abso- absolutely like one of the things that I did now that you're telling me more about these, one of the things that I do love is that we get these stories with this small group of people doing all these amazing things. Crazy and things, I love huh? that because that's something similar that happens in Star Wars as well. Yep. You know, absolutely. That's yeah, something yeah, yeah. that they have similar is the it's 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 not the, the amount of people or who is the bravest, but it's just that you doing things together and just being able to show face and, and, and encourage in front of something that it's so scary. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love those. Uh, I love and, there's, those and there's like five bad guys in this this in this story. It's not just Morgoth. It's not just Sauron. There's the Kelagor McCorfin. There's also Karkaroth. Like there are a lot of bad guys. It's crazy. And wait till you learn about Huan, the Hound of Valinor. You're gonna be like best doggo. Bad. Everybody loves this dog. <laughs> it's the greatest <laughs> creature in Middle Earth like history, and bad he's a problem. And Sauron is a problem, and it's just so dope. Um, so is. when you see now, when you go back and you look at the episode, when you look at the first episode and you see mm-hmm. Galadriel over her brother's body, and then you look at the brother's body and you see claw marks. Yeah, all um, the claw marks. Yeah. You're like, wow. Mm-hmm. So it makes yeah. a lot of sense. So yeah, yeah, I just yeah. wanted to start that story off. <laughs> Sorry, I know that took like an hour. No, hey, hey, I love that story so much because it's like it's so ingrained in 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 honestly tia you don't even have to read the Cimmerillion. they have it it has its own book oh, yeah the, the story of baron luthien to where if you don't want to read everything from the beginning <laughs> of the world <laughs> to, because you'll and be taking a while you'll, you'll, <laughs> like, one. like like i said like i say every single time i start the Cimmerillion, i go i have to literally block out six months and just read it and thank God for Dawn and in and, and, and all of these amazing uh, Tolkien content creators that I can now reach out to and be like, hey, I don't quite understand this. Can you can you explain it to me? Because the way Dawn breaks it down is just so fantastic. And and, and I've and I've taken I've taken a, a, a new appreciation for for you guys because it, it it is it takes a lot to remember these things these names these events so hats off to you guys that that's that's incredible i was about to say i was skimming i was skimming a lot i, yeah, I, I was like i was like I he was, really went he really got through that that was i'm not skimming bad. so much <laughs> i know you oh have no God. idea and i much. thought and i thought we had a lot of stuff to remember with star wars because star wars <laughs> is like a million galaxies like a million <laughs> worlds yeah. stuff. it's a lot it's, for you guys yeah. with these yeah, cool. it's 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 it's, it's, it's off to you guys. Yeah, it's very similar though with the world building for sure, yeah. which yeah. is awesome. Oh so, my goodness. So we've been talking about great jewels, and it makes me think of the time that I worked in a jewelry store and uh working retail. And do you know who else likes to work retail? Um, our wizards, uh, because of the staff discount. <laughs> So what she did there was we were supposed to get that joke in or she was supposed to get that joke in in the beginning of this, but I robbed her of that and she snuck it in. Like a scumbag. I've been looking for my segue everywhere. I was like, I found it. Nice. Like, ah, I got him. Like, we got it. We, 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 gave, her, we gave her that opportunity. We gave her that we shouldn't have been We should have kept talking. We don't have to hear that horrible joke. Do you have a, a Star Wars pun you want to give us? I, did, I, didn't, dare, I didn't want to dare. Oh. I don't. Oh, I don't even think I have a Star Wars pun, to be honest. Sorry, I don't. Have a I, I, I don't. I don't I, yeah. So you you got us one up one, one zero. <laughs> right yeah, there. Next time. Next time we come on, we're you gonna have to come the, more there's prepared. A, um, there's a, a writer. She, her name is Kelly Knox, I think, on Twitter. Yes. Yes. She does these pun the pun jokes. Yes. And I oh, have. To, I'm trying to remember one of them. Oh, she, she has like these jokes. She's that, yeah. really really funny. I'm gonna be ready next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but, steer us in the right direction here. But for real, yeah. But for real, talking about valuable jewels. As is, is, are there anything like? Is there anything like that in Star Wars? Is there? Yes. Like a, crystals. 
Yes. Okay. Kyber crystals. Kyber crystals. Kyber crystals are were, are what power the lightsabers. Oh. Yeah. Does that's what it is, and that is what powers the Death Star. Yes. Oh, oh word. Yes. 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 It's just yeah. a big. It's a big Kyber crystal. You and what? Kyber crystal. Yes. Yeah. Yep. You find that out in Rebels. Uh, I actually. didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. yeah absolutely we, we didn't know i didn't know that either until rebels yeah yeah until rebels like, and saw carrera and... this is what this is what's cool about and and i hope that uh these are people that are very like uh still like uh, i don't know about rings of power um again these are new stories that are being added to the main storyline that yep. are is uh, that are educating us on things that we didn't know before and i think that's what rings of power is going to do as well yeah. Yeah. And you know, yeah. I appreciate that as well. And I and I hope that people appreciate, you know, in in that, that like I said, that are not liking, yeah. oh my god, this is not canon and all that stuff. Like, that yeah. they end up appreciating that because yeah. that just makes the story that much better. And it's and you it's know? part of it is canon. They just can't get over the yeah. part that isn't. And they just yeah, can't, yeah. They can't use yeah, their imagination yeah, exactly. back and forth. And it's like, yeah, relax, exactly. man. It's okay, man. The yeah. second like, age the, the whole Kyber Crystal yeah. thing for Death Star was that was never canon. That was never mentioned anywhere before. You know, that's yep. brand new. When yeah. it seems, to, it seems to make sense, though. Yeah, exactly. Because that's mm-hmm. what Palpatine. So that's why. And to pull it back to the sequels, so uh, Star Killer Base in Force Awakens, right? Yeah. It, it was created. Uh, it what? So Ilum is the sacred Jedi, like where they take their younglings to find their kyber crystals. Mm-hmm. So in uh, season five, yeah, season five, season five uh, yeah. Ahsoka takes younglings to the gathering. The gathering is one of the most sacred Jedi uh, things that they could do, because when you when you get a kyber crystal, it's not just like, oh, it's blue or it's green. The kyber crystal is a living being, a, a living force uh, like that connects with the Jedi. So it's it comes out in different ways. Like it'll be, it, it, it's all about how you connect with the kyber crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's not just oh, uh, it's a you purple go light mine for be- it, and oh, I found one, and that's it. No, exactly. you have to. They have to. It's a whole process. They have to go yes. through this mental and yes. internal type yeah. of struggle. Absolutely, and the like cr- but basically prove yourself. Yeah, that you're gonna be able to you know, connect to this and use it for good and all that yes. stuff, you know? Yeah. Nice, nice. But if you're looking for something that's a little bit more like Lord of the Rings, um, so like the Shards of Narsil, right? Mm. The equivalent to that in Star Wars has to be the Skywalker Saber because the Skywalker Saber is, is very sacred. It's been through three different generations. First, it was Anakin Skywalker's created during the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. It's It's seen a lot of good and bad moments um yeah. uh it, it survives gets passed down to luke mm-hmm. luke ends up losing it maz kanata gets it in the sequel trilogy and it's passed on to ray gotcha and ray ends up completing the task of the whole skywalker saga the whole skywalker saga is the jedi or the for the light side force users destroying the sith and finally finding balance in the force. Gotcha. So that's what, so like the sacred thing is that lightsaber. That lightsaber is Narsil uh, gotcha. to that line of, of, of Jedi. It's not necessarily a line, but like, it's like Excalibur if you think gotcha. about yeah. it. That's, yeah, that's, it's, more, it's more closely to Excalibur than anything else, but like like the Cimmerils would be definitely the, the Kyber Crystals. Mm-hmm. Kyber Crystals. Um, yeah. And just being able to like go down in deep lore like the, in the high republic there's a lightsaber whip there's a jedi that has a lightsaber whip Ooh. and that's never been seen in canon before it was mm. in legends but it's 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 now a concept it's... that is that is different now mm-hmm. and it's it's so interesting to compare the two like the dark saber too uh the dark saber so the dark saber um mm-hmm. Callie, do you, have you watched uh mandalorian yes okay, okay. so the dark saber okay. So the dark saber is a saber that was made by the Mandalorians. The Mandalorians are a warrior race that um, that had a Jedi um, that ended up, that had a Jedi, the first and only Jedi from the Mandalorians that we know of in canon. 
up mm-hmm. till this point, he was it was like unheard of that a Mandalorian was a Jedi because mm-hmm. they are so different in and cultures they were like and enemies for a little bit, right? Yes, yeah, yes. In, yeah, yeah. In legends, yes, they haven't flushed that all out in canon as of yet. Okay. Um, but it's it's very, very it's it's a sacred thing to both the Mandalorian and the Jedi. So mm-hmm. once that Jedi dies, they take that lightsaber and they keep it in at, in Coruscant, which is the main hubbub. Uh, it's where the um, the Senate is. It's where everything happens, right? And the main and, Jedi temple and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. And they keep it there. And then the Sith in Legends end up attacking and the Mandalorians help and they grab that, that lightsaber and they take off. The canon story is kind of similar. They just like, I guess they infiltrate and they just steal it. And then it gets passed down to the rightful leader of Mandalore. Of Mandalore. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a big deal in Mando season two when Bo-Katan Kreez, uh, the ginger, uh, she she calls for it. And that's why it's such a big deal that Din Din has it at this time. It makes him the true rightful rightful heir to 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 Mandalore. Mandalore. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask something. because see if it's a, some, there's something similar in you know in the Lord of the Rings. So basically, the way that the Sith get their kyber crystals is they be uh you know because their lightsabers are red, right? All of their lightsabers are red. There's no different colors. Mm-hmm. So the way they do this is they take a a regular kyber crystal, you know, blue, green, you know, purple, whatever, mm-hmm. and they it's called bleeding the kyber the, the crystal, which is basically they take all their hate and oh. anger and all that those bad feelings and they pour it into the crystal and yes. basically they're torturing the crystal yeah. to the point that it turns red yes oh, wow. it's it's so that's and that's how they get you know the thing and then there's a process where you can reverse it which where you get ahsoka's white crystals yeah yes a white in, crystal in means that it used to be red and it got turned back into light oh, okay yes. so is there something similar like that like you know in um Go to the ring. The closest thing I can think of is um, there's a sword known as Angler Hill, and um, it's later changed. His name is changed into Gorthan, and it's created from the ore of a fallen meteorite. And this asshole of an elf named Ao uh-huh. takes this ore and he creates these two swords. And the one one of the swords, it's it he gives it to King Thingol. Same Thingol that sends uh, Baron on his quest. And it's sitting in his thing. But the sword is cursed. And Melian, being a Maya, knows that the sword is cursed. She can feel it. And she, you know, she has foresight and everything. And the, during the story of Turin Tarumba, there's an elf that comes to help Turin. And his name is Beleg. And he needs a sword of worth because he's called Beleg the Strongbow. He uses bow and arrows. He's nice. Mm-hmm. You think Legolas is nice? He's nothing compared to Beleg absolutely nothing so he says i need a sword because there's too many orcs like they're coming too close a bone arrow ain't gonna do it i need a sword thingle says you can take whatever sword you want he sees this great sword it's black it's it's really dope and he takes that sword and melian tries to tell him the sword is evil i can feel like the heart of its maker in the sword and he doesn't listen and he takes the sword anyway story happens he ends up getting killed by his own sword and his best friend Torn is the one who kills him by accident with this sword. Yep. Oh, Torn wow. ends okay. up taking the sword. Mm-hmm. When it's called Angler Hill, and Torn ends up taking the sword and using it. And Torn is cursed. So not only is the sword cursed, but Torn is also cursed by Morgoth. His family is, you think, oh my goodness, you think anybody in Star Wars has a bad life. Torn has the worst life ever. And I still hate him, but he has the worst <laughs> life ever. He is cursed and Nothing can go right for him. It's okay. almost like Darth Vader. Like it's, that, that's okay. a comparison. Comparison. Okay. Yeah. It's just Anakin Vader. Skywalker making every bad choice. Ever. And, exactly. And, and ultimately mm-hmm. being ultimately being cursed by mm-hmm. Anakin stands that want to be apologists, but yeah, can't yeah, yeah. realize that his actions are actually his own. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Yep. Exactly. And he carries around the black sword and he does great with the sword. As far as fighting goes, he is second only to his father, Hurin who is the fucking man that was mm-hmm. complete. Who, nobody's more powerful as far as a man, as far as fighting goes than Horan. Turin is close. 
And Torin, nobody can beat Torin at this time. Like he's the man, he has the black sword and he does great things with it. He becomes known as the Mormon Guild or black sword. And he gets the sword cleaned up and like reforged and it's called Gorthang, the Irons of Death. And push comes to shove, he ends up killing a great adversary with this sword. But the prick takes the sword and tries to get it back. And instead of just leaving the freaking sword where it is, he tries to get it back. It messes up his whole thing. All this craziness happens. The woman he loves ends up killing herself. He ends up killing an innocent person. He finds out all this craziness. I don't even want to get into that because you might go cry in a corner. (laughs) Trust trust me, all this bad shit happens. And (laughs) and in the end, he's left to face, he's, he's faced with the fact that he's cursed, but in all actuality, he did everything. Like he's his decisions. Every time he tried to do something, it just went wrong. Yes, so Peter. <laughs> yes, and he's Anna looking Kishawa at the sword. Yeah. Yep. And he's like, yo, he killed his best friend. He killed the innocent guy, the, all this shit. And he looks at the sword. And he says, yo, man, will you kill me? And the sword says to him, yeah, for, for, for you killing Belly, I'll kill you. And for you killing the, the innocent dude, yeah, I'll yeah. gladly kill you. Yeah. And he leans on his sword and yep. it kills him. And wow. many people think that's the black sword that uh, Theo was holding. That's many interesting. Think that it's not. I don't. I hope they didn't do that. But many people think that's that sword. It's a black sword. And I, I, I would like Which, to get to who, a, that who's holding uh, Theo. Theo in the Rings of Power. The, the sword that he's holding. The broken sword in the Rings of Power. Oh, okay, Theo. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. They All think right. that's Gorthang, and because it, it broke when he when he killed himself with it. It, it, the sword broke underneath him, and he, he's dead. And and it's a tragic sword. And also, to I know how you you know how you said the white uh, the the kyber crystal can turn white if you like make it good again. Mm-hmm. This is also the sword that is going to kill Morga in the end of the world in the final battle, the Dago Dagara. So it gets redemption yep. in a sense. Oh, not nice. not that it has the same exact arc as an, a lightsaber, but yeah. it's like. It's like a cursed lightsaber, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it does mm-hmm. all this great stuff, but bad stuff. But then it gets redemption at the end. It's the only sword that can kill Morgoth. It kills Morgoth at the end in the final battle. And Torin oh, gets cool. resurrected, yeah. and he's the one who kills Morgoth. So it's craziness. And that's one of those weapons to where it's like, Jesus, like, that is <laughs> that sucks, man. Yeah. That, okay. That's, yeah, that's so cool. Story. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that that storyline is basically Anakin Skywalker from yeah. beginning to end. And yeah, yeah that that's that's it. the parallels between the two franchises are very similar. They're, they are close, more closely knit than some would like to say. Well, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, George Lucas took some inspiration from Lord of the Rings. He said that. Yes, yes, he took from Greek mythology. He took from Tolkien. He he took from uh, different mythologies as as a whole, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and he didn't directly take he didn't directly take like word for word from word for absolutely things, not no. But but the concepts of things absolutely. What, absolutely. what he created stands completely on his own. There's nothing like Star Wars. It's yep. amazing. Like mm-hmm. I, if I if I felt like deep diving and becoming one of you guys, I would love to do that. I'm just not sure if my brain has the capacity to hold anything else. I, I don't yeah. think your schedule has the time, Mr. Yeah, the to hold schedule, anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 my thing. Is that I I want to get more into talking and I want to do fantasy podcasts. And I want to do this and then I want to do that. But it's like it's Star a lot. Wars is good. So it, Andor's coming down the pipeline. Yeah. We got we got Bad we Batch coming lot, down the ba- yeah. pipeline. We got Tales we of the Jedi Ahsoka. coming down the pipeline. We got Ahsoka we got uh, Star Wars Celebration in London coming down the pipeline. There's just a lot of stuff with Star Wars. Mm-hmm. We got Comic Con and... in New York. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You going? It's... You going to you? Yeah, yeah. I'm going. You going? Yeah, I'm going. What you mean? Yeah, we're all going. Yeah, I'm gonna be. We gonna be there. We mean. Wait, are you going too? Yeah, we're coming. We're oh, out. Going. We yeah, all hang out. Let's go. I'm going oh, Saturday no. and Sunday. Okay, that's what's up. I'm be on the and panel, gonna, so I'm doing, make sure you come uh, to my panel. Yeah. Oh, you're doing a panel? We're doing a panel again, so like we did in. Sir, I mean, hello. You need to let me know this. So I, I know. got you. I got you. I just just was, we just got verified today, so. Oh, that's, oh, that's so awesome. Cool. Definitely, so, I'll be. There. That's awesome. That's yeah. good for you. Um, that's, that's awesome. 
I'm going to get yeah, you guys when you need to get me to Lord of the Rings, though. Don't worry. I'm going to get you there. Slowly, <laughs> I slowly. appreciate that. I appreciate I that you. a lot because I, I I do want to know what I'm talking about when I when I because I feel like some and and I don't want to point any fingers because that's not what we're here to do. But a lot of people talk out of their ass. They don't <laughs> know what the hell they're talking about and they misinform their base. Yeah. And I I don't want to do that because I see that with a big Star Wars creator, which he who shall not be named. He who because, shall not be named. Yeah, yes. he who shall not be named uh has <laughs> literally turned there's been a there's a couple of them that have turned Star Wars YouTube into the toxicity that you know. Botchery. It, it's very it, much like a it, uh, freaking neurotics clown. Yes, exactly. And it's just like, like I, I want to be able to tell them, have you? I don't want to be gatekeeping in the way, in the sense of like, have you? What, what is your knowledge? Where are you getting this from? It, it's not even the knowledge; it's the hate mongering. So yes. this is our podcast. So I don't care. I'll call him out because he has called me out and said shit about me, and he doesn't know me from a hole in the wall. So fuck that guy. So and he can't beat me in a fight either. So <laughs> because I, I don't like that. Like I don't. You don't know me. You don't know nothing about me. You, you could have had a conversation with me and said, yeah. "Hey, we had a conversation at least," and then surmise some stuff. But you didn't even do that. You just yeah. You hate went mongering. straight to the fort. You, yeah. just you go on your page throat. and you hate monger about these shows because you see that it, it attracts a certain amount of people and you know you're going to get views off of it. And that's, that's just exactly so disingenuous. That's just all it is. They, 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 they figured that they figured out a way to make more money. Yeah. That's the wave right now. People yeah. would like want to hate on things and just be like against things and it, whatever. It is what it is. But like, yo, dude, like do that shit. Like that shit is somewhere just else. Yeah. Yeah. See somewhere that else. right there. What 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 I think about that and people that do that. How do you call yourself a fan when you're doing such a disservice to something that you say that you love? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's because they don't love it. Ex- they that's don't what love I'm it. saying. Like, how, don't say it. that you love it. That you're such a big fan that this is that that this fandom or this story means so much to you when you are creating something. You know, when you're contributing to to. to to, to like basically tarnish it, you know? Yeah, yeah and it's, it's really sad because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't even, like, you're you're making people miss out because some people take what you say f- for real. Like, they take yeah. what you're saying and they're like, oh, this must be, and they're missing out. And it's yeah, like, it's are. really sad. And you're like poisoning the That's fandom. That's what's going on with the High Republic. Yeah. The High Republic, yeah. because without even reading it, just because they know that there's, POC characters, black characters, LGBTQ plus characters. Yep. Without even reading, they're already, oh, it's woke. It's garbage. Don't even go read yeah. that. And it's, meanwhile, this is what they're telling their they're audience. Missing. And now their audience is missing some of the best storytelling in Star Wars. The best right now. Because that is the best era currently. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you, hit the, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, one of the big Star Wars creators couldn't get past Light of the Jedi the first 30 minutes of it. And he goes, oh, you don't have to waste your time reading that. That's that's not true. Not everybody is the same. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It, that's you're just you're just pandering. And uh, it, a lot of us now that are on the TikTok community are now making content and, and moving over to YouTube. We're making this wave. And and I have to shout out Diet in the Force, Dark Chaco and Element 7. Yo, those Chaco. guys. Yeah, yeah. Those <laughs> yeah, guys. He's awesome. Yeah, those guys are they they walked so that folks like me and Tia could run. They 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 won't say that. They won't they don't like to take credit for it, but it's absolutely true. They 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 have a big following and they they're trying to be more positive. They're just do being positive, ab- man. Do we There's absolutely love it. everything that we see? No. no. There's it, it's damn near impossible to make something perfect that everybody loves. Exactly. You know? And but but I am, like I said earlier, I'm not going to go out of my way to trash something that somebody loves. You know, like we yeah. can, I, I would like to have a conversation about something. And, and, and you know, I want to learn from something, a, a perspective that I, I, that I might not have had before. Yeah. And you just, it just seems like you can't have that in today's world. Yeah. It's either my way or the highway. There's no in between. Yeah. There's no middle ground. Yeah. And exactly, it's it's sad because whatever happened really to learn something. I don't like it, but hey, go ahead. 
You, exactly. You, just be like, I, hey, always say, and I always tell people, like, I, and I've said it before, listen, I'm never going to tell anyone not to read something, not to listen to something, not to watch something. You need to, and, and, and if anything comes out, I, I, I advise people to listen. I, I'm sure you, you're very interested in what somebody has to say about it, their, their opinion on something, but go watch it yourself first and yeah, then yeah. go see mm. how you feel about it. And then come back and listen to what this other person is saying. See Absolutely. if you agree or disagree with them. Because Absolutely. if we listen to somebody, even now, even I was like, even with me, don't listen to me to go, don't, don't, don't listen to anything I say. Because I don't want to put a preconceived notion in their head already, like that little seed, you know? Yeah. To me, I'm always like, go watch it first. Absolutely. Doesn't matter if gotcha. people are saying it's bad, go watch it. Maybe and that's how it should be. Cup of tea. And that's how it should be, you know? Tia. That should, that, that should be how it is. In all fandom, yeah, because you're you're missing out on some good storytelling. You're missing out on people that that, that are characters that you might gravitate to. You you're missing out because some ass clown likes to think that their opinion is holier than thou, and their their shit don't stink, but it really does. It stinks more than they like to admit. Yeah, admit, and it's just nonsensical. And they don't even be right about the stuff. Like it's, I can see if they were like spot on with the shit they were saying. Like they'd be dead wrong about a lot of sh- the lore. They don't be know no one know the lore or anything. They just want to like you know mine with the hate. They like mine yeah. the hate. Like there's some yeah. kind of wolf or something. It's crazy. That so, and they already create a, their own story. Story in their head, yep. and they're like, this and is in it. their yeah. head, and then. Because it didn't come out the way they wanted it, then it's oh, it is bad. Oh, it's, it's garbage. That's not what garbage. I wanted. Uh, I, like so, I was watching. I was on YouTube last night, and I was just like scrolling, and I, I, um, I saw a thumbnail, and it was it was a live stream. It had Disa, and then it had all of the uh, all of the hobbits wearing Dawn stuff, mm-hmm. and the, and every single person had a clown nose on it Ugh. and i instantly instantly i go you know what i'm gonna just see what these fuckers have to say mm-hmm. they, and it was and it was two women which blows my mind yeah absolutely blows my mind they were making comments of of oh i want receipts of why uh, i want to see the receipts of of all the cast getting hate and that. misogynist and, oh, and yeah. racism and were they, they like, the ones calling receipts. her guy ladriel yes oh. yes Yes. And I go and, and I was on FaceTime with with my girlfriend and she's not as big as Lord of the Rings fans. Uh, she's more Star Wars. And I'm just like, do like one of their complaints was like, it's not this. This Galadriel isn't the same as the Peter Jackson movies. I'm like, no shit, bitch, because it's it's literally like it, it's it, well, one five thousand years before. Yeah, that. yeah it's yeah. five years, that five thousand years before. And it's two separate properties. If you think about it. Like it's, it's not that hard. Thing. But that's why it, people don't understand what adaptation means. Oh god, damn! It drove me Everybody's nuts. Everybody's gonna just have like, their own adaptation yeah. of this of, of the story, so it's not gonna all be. The and same. it was so weird to hear it. Hear women say Galadriel when it's like, like, don't you want you? I hear women all the time screaming, screaming, screaming about representation and how how we should have women writers, we should have women actresses, we should. We should have main leading roles be powerful Strong women. Strong roles. And then women. you have these fucking assholes coming out and saying the opposite. Putting yeah, us I back saw a, a lady decades. made a video about it. And I was uh, going to make a video, but I was just like, ah, I don't want to get, I don't want to go down this road because no. it's so stupid. But then I see some videos and I can't help it. And, I, and she was like, we don't want, we don't want a powerful uh, man like a woman and I'm like Galadriel is just that way she's always been that yeah. way in the book like yeah. they're just you know forwarding Galadriel from the first age and putting it in the second age in a sense of just to show they can show a character arc she doesn't really do much in the second age so they're just they're moving it to time a little bit to show you she went through a huge change and then she yes. got to finally the Galadriel we know in the third age in the, the first age, age yeah. she was kicking ass going across the hell Caraxa. she was fighting against the Feanorians when they um um when the Feanorians were fighting in Aqualon, they fighting the Teleri. She was fighting against them. She, her father, I mean, her mother's people are the the Aqualon. The literally, that's her grandfather right there. So th- those are her people getting slain. So of course, she fought against her uncle, and that was killing them. And it says that Tolkien wrote that down. She's Amazonian. Her name is Nur. Uh, 
a man maiden. She um, like, Nerwin, the man maiden. Like she she braided her hair to do activities. She's a match for any of the all these things are written down, but they just gloss over them or don't know them at all. And they just just literally go on these tirades. But that's it, like, that's what it seems like because it seems like they're just movie fans. That it, it yeah. the way they talk, if they, they the, that type of stuff that we're saying doesn't doesn't seem like they they that they read the books then. You know, they, they don't know the, the lore. And I like, she's wearing gay. armor, and I'm like, they're like, but she's supposed to be a magic user, and I'm like, okay, she is the most powerful <laughs> magic user is Sauron, and yep. he wears armor. So what are you talking about? Yeah, so, so you can't make magic like, if you have armor on. What like what? No, because you just repel swords with your. <laughs> like, I know, right? Magic, like, you know? like, oh my god, it's it's so it's so sad. Oh my god. that I have to hear Mary Sue being used with Galadriel the same way it was being used with Rey. Yeah, I had to ask what that meant today. Yeah, yeah. because this yes. Mary Sue thing was it's, killing me. I was like, what are you talking I'm about? Like, I'm I don't like, understand how, how, how they're going to call Galadriel that when she's supposed to be she's like, supposed to overpowered. Be, like, the she, strongest. Besides Sauron, best. she is the strongest. Yeah, she's that's supposed not to be like a girl joke. boss. She's supposed that's to be a girl the, boss. Like, that's not made up. Like, I'm not saying that. That's 100% fact. The yep. second strongest person in Middle Earth is Galadriel. Yeah, the only I, person I, stronger than her is Sauron. Yeah, that's it's it. just, yeah, it's just a, it's so it's so tired. It, it's like I that's why, like that's why I want to learn these things from you guys so that I know How that to... these people don't know what the fuck they are talking <laughs> they don't know about. What the fuck? Yeah. Because, that's why I appreciate you guys so it's, much. It's just, it's just it, and I can do that for Star Wars because I know the lore. I've read but mm -hmm. I've read almost the entire timeline in canon. I know my shit. I am able to call somebody out on their bullshit because they don't they don't understand things like Palpatine's return in, in the sequel trilogy. It is now being put out in other media and the per and the people, you know, these motherfuckers don't pay attention or don't care to go read a goddamn book or listen to an audio book. But they'll be like, oh, it doesn't make sense. Uh, motherfucker, it's in a video game. It's <laughs> explained in a whole trilogy. And and it's it's explained in Shadows of the Sith, which is the most recent story about Luke Skywalker and Lando fucking Calrissian. Lando. It it it, yeah. the, it it is so frustrating. It's so frustrating because it's these people that just want to spout their shit and they think they know everything and they really don't. They yeah. don't. You don't have any business talk, and it sounds so gay. I hate, I hate sounding gatekeeping. Yo, bro, but you're telling the facts, man. You know what? You know what? Ah. We we gonna we gonna back up off that topic. I mean, we we getting a little emotional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Fuck them guys, <laughs> man. And and like yeah. I said, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, it is yeah. what it is. We we preach positivity over here, inclusivity, yeah. mm -hmm. inclusiveness. I don't know how to say the word. Yeah, I'm from New <laughs> We're York, struggling so with that word today. I'm struggling like, with the word. Right. Inclusivity. Word. Y'all can talk shit. Inclusive. Talk shit about how I pronounce it all you want to. You know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah. I'm saying like I, I don't have no problems about that. I pronounce shit wrong all the time. And oh, you know what I'm Tia know what I'm talking about. We from New York. We say shit wrong all the time. <laughs> My, that's that, a the accent be killing us. Like, be you know, kill trying to say with an accent, it's like Bleh. yo, they be, yo, they, people was telling me the, um, what's the shit that in Lord of the Rings they be telling me to say, and I'm like, I'm not doing that. Like they, <laughs> I, I, I used to just say Sauron. You know what I'm saying? And I finally got into the point like this year where I can say Sauron, and they don't understand. It's not about me I, that I like. I don't want to pronounce it right, or I think I don't know. As a New Yorker, it's hard to say Sauron. <laughs> it's not easy. Like we don't talk like that. It's See? just uh, the only thing that saves me is because I speak Spanish, so I just yeah. pronounce it in a Spanish way. So Sauron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 You, you got a, like, a leg I can up. Do that. Yeah, well, I, I know like, Spanish, though. We don't talk like that. We don't say like I. I'll be like I'll be really struggling like, and I'm like I'm not doing it like. I'm not, like Sauron, what up? Like Sauron, Sauron, yo, you know you know who I'm talking about. We and, know. Oh, you're you. not a master, like yeah, I am. I just can't. <laughs> like my New Yorkness won't allow me to. Like, I, I gotta move my tongue as like extra like around. Like, <laughs> to say this word, and I'm not doing it. I'm stubborn I'm and roll I'm the do it. But I got it now. Where I'm like, Sauron, See, Sauron, 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 Sauron. Again, that's something Sauron. that I can thankfully do because of. Yeah, you know, he's talking Spanish, but Absolutely. it's not easy rolling a tongue. Yo, <laughs> yo, that shit is funny though. People don't understand it. They're just like, "What are you doing?" Especially English people, they get so mad. And I'm like, "Yo, I speak a whole different type of English than you. Like, we understand each other, but we you 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 say shit, and I'd be like, what? And 
I say shit, you be like, what? Like people in Boston, I be looking at them like they're crazy. I'm like, they're, they're talking mad funny. Like they're yeah. talking mad funny. They're speaking the same English I'm speaking, but they're speaking out of control. People from down south, I'll be like, yo, dude, what are you saying? Like, <laughs> what the fuck is you talking about? Like we talk the same, but different. It's, yeah. it's all around the country. You know what I'm saying? Just understand that everybody speaks differently. And if they pronounce something a little wrong or whatever, or off or whatever, and, and I know that they know how to really pronounce it, it doesn't bother me. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I know that they got their vernacular that they speak and it's okay. And that's yeah. what being inclusive is all about. Like, it's okay. I I know, I just want them to enjoy it. It's okay if they, mm-hmm. you know, as long as they're not going around saying, no, this is how you say that. And trying to teach people the yeah. wrong thing. That's yeah. a little yeah. different. But as long as they, they can do it their own way and, and that's fine and let them enjoy it. Like, I hate the Hobbit, but there are people who love it. I let them enjoy it. That's cool, man. I, I'm glad you enjoy it. Don't talk to me about that shit, but <laughs> I, I'm glad you I only really enjoy certain it. parts and certain people from the Hobbit. <laughs> but now nah, it's all love, though. I'm like, I'm glad that they, they're getting something out of it. And I've, I've said, yeah. I think I've said yeah, it yeah, every yeah. podcast I've had how much I hate the yeah. Hobbit. And, and now touring is starting to take over. How much yeah. I hate touring. Yeah. So. so before, I know Luke has to go shortly to record Hello. his own podcast. What questions do you have for our guests today? All right, we're going to mix this up a little bit. We're going to mix this up. So, um, Luke, I'm going to ask you our typical question, and T, I'm going to ask you a non-typical question. Okay, so, Luke, anybody in the Lord of the Rings whole world, it doesn't matter, first, second, third age, who would you marry? Who would you have uh, fight for you, defend you? Okay. And who would you fight? Anybody in you can pick anybody from any race, anything. Um. Okay, I'd marry Luthien. That's a cheat code. Solid choice. Cheat, cheat code right there. Cheat code. Still solid um, choice. I am fight with. Definitely like have to protect Aragorn. you. Have to protect you, Aragorn. Aragorn. Um, I he's my favorite character uh, of all Tolkien. Um, and that's even including uh, Baron and also um, uh, Elrond. Uh, Gelgalad is up there as well. But um, and even Glorfindel. Shit. Like there's so many options. Finn Golfin and yeah, Finn Gellion Golfin. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, got Aragorn I, over Finn Golfin. And, I know. I know. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a hot take. It's a hot take. It's a hot take. And you know what? <laughs> you know who I want to kill? You know who I want to kill? Fanor, because if it weren't yeah. for Fanor, yeah. what's yeah. Fanor? Yeah. Fuck would... Fanor, man. Yeah, exactly. Fuck exactly. That guy. That's who I'm taking. That's who I'm Yo, taking. Yeah, no, nah, that's a, that, that now that one is valid right there. The middle <laughs> one, yeah, we got a lot of better choices now. But you can pick who you want. <laughs> Aragorn, like Aragorn is dope, but then when you read the Silmarillion, you're like, fuck Ugh. Aragorn. I, I'm, <laughs> start, I'm thinking. I think I'm gonna have a like crazy. a nice little uh, man crush on a Lendil, man. <laughs> I, I, I've literally, I've literally contemplated getting cosplay stuff so that i can cosplay as him nice oh that'd be cool nice. i support that all right Tia. <laughs> yes your question is a little different because we know you're not fully enveloped in the lord of the rings lore yet so mm-hmm. i want to save that question yes. for you until yes. another time but in the star wars fandom who would you marry who would you have protect you and who would you want to fight I can just, I can tell you, I can tell you who she would marry right off the bat. And again. Yeah, you and already again. know. Yeah, y'all already know. <laughs> my whole personality. Yeah, hate, yeah, hating Christensen walking around with Tia. Oh my God. That's it. Right. That's, That's what's me. up. So yeah, Anakin definitely I'm marrying. Um, who I'm going to have defending me? Yep. I'm going to have, you know what? I'm going to have Yoda defending me. Oh, I'm okay. Gonna, Interesting. You know, Interesting. Gonna get out there, so Interesting. Yeah, yeah, I would have gone Obi Wan, but you know, I know, I know you would have gone <laughs> Obi Wan, yes. But I'm going with you know what, I'm going with High Republic Yoda, okay. okay. I all right, not as problematic, that's good, yeah, exactly. He's good. not problematic there, and he's <laughs> strong as fuck, that little freaking yes, frog, absolutely. <laughs> and who I'm fighting, <sighs> see, I'm already thinking about him, and I'm already getting fucking mad. Oh, Palpatine. Please. It's going down. <laughs> I would have chosen. I would have chosen Keanu Mundi. Fuck Keanu Mundi. <laughs> the fucking worst. It is <laughs> no, fuck Palpatine. That motherfucker ruined everything. The yeah. whole, you know, beautiful. Sp- yeah, no. He, yeah, yo, he, no, yo, he, he, yo, he fucked shit up, yo. Definitely. Yeah. Palpatine was out of control. Smart as fuck, because that's one of the smart, the smartest person ever. Yo, yeah, yeah, he but definitely. Marchion Row, though. Marchion Row in the. In, Market, yeah, yeah, Marchion Row, yeah. Row. He is. Uh, 
He's a smart Ooh. bad daddy. <laughs> oh yeah. Yep. All but right, Palpatine right. definitely got it. Because gotcha. basically every you know, if it wasn't for him, things things would have been the galaxy would have been a beautiful place. Like, okay, okay. I like that. I like that. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go and I'm gonna answer that question myself. I'm gonna interject myself into the Star Wars fandom for a second. <laughs> yeah. So I would marry Ahsoka. Nice. I would marry Ahsoka. Love that. Who would I have protect me? Now this is gonna throw you the fuck off. But oh, my boy go. Cad Bane is protected. Okay. All That's right. I like that. That's, That's my favorite move. bounty hunter, by the way. That's, That's my, my guy right there. All I gotta say That's... is you better have deep fucking pockets because he ain't cheap. He ain't cheap, but I'm he definitely <laughs> Cad Bane. Is, I'm he, definitely, and I'm gonna piss Tia off, but I'm gonna fight Anakin. Not that gone. is, you know what? It, I understand Anakin. that though. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. There's a lot I of Anakin it. haters, and Pisses they are off. they are so in their own right. They're I love cool. Darth Vader, but Anakin bothers me. Is it because of the prequel writing? The third movie in particular does it for me. And it, it's just the way he uh, it just, I think it was just trying to be too quick. And yes. it, it, he, he, he annoys me in that. I feel that. So, I feel that. Dude. Have it, you watched it, the, and you yet, though, the show yet though? I'm halfway through it. Okay. okay what season right. are you on? Um, I don't even know, but I just know I'm like halfway through it. What's the last <laughs> okay. thing that you remember? Um, Cad Bane, they were, uh, feeling the holocron, yeah, some shit like that. Like, Ooh, okay, so your that. second season, so okay, second so, season. It, okay. so, so the so first, the way in Cali, if you haven't watched, have you watched Clone Wars? No, okay, no. okay. so here's the thing, he looks, you got uh, so excited when I said so, no, <laughs> so, so, okay, so the way this works, right? Not gonna, uh, no, I am, I'm gonna plug my own podcast because we taught, we did a whole rewatch of of all seven seven seasons of the clone wars oh wow okay so okay. If i'm not halfway to... through it i'm a, bit, a quarter away through it. Yeah. yeah so if yeah, you yeah. want a partner podcast that you can listen to we break everything down we do little fun little things that's Go perfect check that out okay and but like the first two seasons tough to get through but once you hit season three that shit starts running it oh starts my running God. and it never stops it never stops so so definitely I would encourage everybody if you're new to the Lord, new to the Star Wars community, watch Clone Wars, watch Rebels. They're not just for kids. These shows have deeper adult meaning. They the stories that are told so well done. Some of the best storytelling is done in animation. Yeah. And it's so so well done. So I would I think say to me personally yeah, yeah, Rebels yeah. is my favorite show. Yeah. Rebels has some of the best force lore. Yes. Some of the best character arcs, because there's yep. also new characters that are getting introduced. So, yeah. And we see them in those throughout the seasons, like how they go from point A to point B. And just it's it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, storyline with um with all these people. Definitely. Yeah. But absolutely. for Anakin, though, in Clone Wars, you get a little bit more nuance. You get a little bit more, you know, different perspective of who he was. Yeah. Who he was. And oh, man. Better when you get to the Mortis arc. Hot take, hot take. Mortis, kind of overrated. I love but it. See, I love it. No, I do. But in 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 terms of explaining who what Anakin is in the Force, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I see it. I, I know. Uh, no, do no, I, I see do. some tension among these? Two? <laughs> no, 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 I, the Force Lord thing is such yeah. a good thing for me that that's why Mortis are no, like absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, I when get, it comes I, to Force Lord, I get that. Like they're mm -hmm. like the the when you hear when you hear of arcs or episodes that are are you need to watch. It goes Mortis, Umbara, um, the Ahsoka, um, uh, the, when she leaves the Order. That's a big one. That's a huge one. Um. And then there are some arcs that weren't put into the show because it got cut off. Dark yeah. Disciple is a great book. So if you like sexy tension and a lot, <laughs> a lot of like, like bad, like, oh, Dark Disciple, hands down. If you want like hot romance in Star Wars, that or Lost Stars are the two books that I would, I would point you to. They are steamy. Yeah. Also, Steve. arcs. By what we mean by arcs is that these these episodes got divided. Like they tell little stories. Little stories. And yeah. like yes. three, 
three episodes. I watched yep. watch Dragon Ball Z, so I know about ours. Yes, oh, okay, yes. There you go. There's <laughs> a, there, there, basically. There are some episodes that are filler. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. But it's that's with every show except for yeah, Obi Wan Kenobi little, because it's if still you call, a show for kids too, you know. So yeah. absolutely, little it, stuff it, that it's yeah. for kids yeah. also to enjoy, you know. Yeah. So, which we consider filler. In that same vein, I'm going to suggest that we, which we got to start doing again, and we're mm-hmm. probably going to start over again. I'm just relegating Callie to this task because she does the <laughs> reading. Mondays, usually around twelve o'clock, we read the Silmarillion. And I want you guys to join us. We'll start over if that will help because I really want, I really want you in particular, uh, Tia, to yes. get into the Silmarillion and understand how dope it is and how deep and vast and to understand these characters and then mm-hmm. we can get into these conversations so like you just guys had a little discourse there so there's like little things that i have discourse about like mm-hmm. uh i know you know about the fall of gondolin and yes. how crazy it was and people always <laughs> have this viewpoint of glorfindel and how dope glorfindel is and i'm like well Ecthelion is the better fighter and everybody always concentrates on glorfindel because what he did save the world but what Ecthelion did was just as grand and great it just didn't save the world because that wasn't its role at the time and Ecthelion actually did more than Glorfindel it's weird so I always like have that back and forth and when Mm -hmm. like we do ratings and stuff like that I'll put Ecthelion like like, second best elf fighter ever sometimes I even put him number one and they're like how can you be over Fingolfin how can it be over Glorfindel and I explained it to them mm-hmm. and you to be able to understand why and silly little things like that um mm-hmm. it's it's going to be awesome because I'm sure you're like who the fuck is Ecthelion why does it matter <laughs> what are you talking about I know I heard about Glorfindel but I don't know what he did it's yeah awesome. it's, it's going to be sick you're going to be like yo there's some powerful people in the Lord of the Rings man some powerful I can't being. wait that's gonna be awesome definitely no of course uh, just you know let me know you know when and stuff like yeah. that because that's definitely yeah. something I have to get on. Mm-hmm. So we'll we'll, uh, we'll let you guys plug your podcast uh, one more time before we get out of here, and then we'll let Callie uh, bring us out with a uh, self care tip. tip. Yeah, I finally said it right this time. Yes. <laughs> All right. So um, basically, again, my uh, Twitter and my TikTok handle is Star Wars Tia. Um, B S T A R G U A R S T I A. And my Instagram is Scotty Skywalker all together. So that's where you find me being Star Wars mostly, but I do everything Marvel, DC, Lord of the Rings now, you know. You're, stuff, a, so, you're a saint yeah. for doing Marvel. I could <laughs> I, never. I, I, love I, love, I, I love Marvel, but I just can never get myself to do content. Yeah, like those that. nerds over there, boy. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lately. I'm telling you, it's, it's <laughs> oh, tough crowd the misogyny over there. and see that everybody has different ones. Like right now, the misogyny is running rampant in, in Marvel. Yeah. Lord is. of the Rings has the and has the dragon has the racism. racism. Star Wars yeah. just has everything. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's no chill. You know, no chill. No chill. No chill. <laughs> But we, um, we love it all anyway. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Um, you guys can find me at the Pod Ones podcast every Thursday night. Uh, we go live 8 Central. Uh, no, uh, 7.30 Central Standard Time. Uh, we are currently going through our rewatch uh, and explaining every episode and every arc of Star Wars Rebels. So if you'd like to join us there, uh, we're on YouTube, Twitch. Uh, you can follow us on our social medias at the Pod Once Podcast on TikTok, the Pod Once Pod on Instagram, and Pod Once Podcast on uh, Twitter. Um, I would love to get you guys on for Star Wars. Uh, it, it, I, I know you guys don't aren't as big into it, but that's the awesome thing is that you get a different perspective, and I'm that's what, it, I'm and that's, and that's what, and that's what, that's what we try to do. We try to bring in new faces in the community. Um, and I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come on and, and talk Tolkien and, and to kind of nerd out about Tolkien because I don't get to do that very often and uh, getting it, getting to learn a little bit more about the lore and stuff from you guys yeah. is, has, has been amazing. So um, no and also we do the watch alongs, right? Yep. For yep. Power. So we do. So we do watch alongs. Uh, Rings of Power uh, comes out my time at 11. So we start at 1030. Uh, and it's on Scener. Uh, so if you guys want to join us watching that, make sure your Amazon or HBO Max is 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 is, is all le- linked in so that we can watch it together. Uh, and then we do House of Dragon 
uh, um, watch alongs and reactions uh, as well on uh, Sunday nights. On Sundays, so yeah. uh, it's been it's been a wild ride. Uh, we are getting into new franchises, and I'm absolutely yeah. Better was with us the, the first two episodes of Rings of Power. Yeah. Yeah. The first one I had to leave. Kelly, if you want to come, like I don't know if you do watch along tomorrow, but if you want to, you know, you come and like join and watch with us, and you know, we do the commentary. Dude, that was oh, fun. Yeah. That was out with the Lord too. Yeah, you know? that sounds yeah, fun. That's, that was oh, fun. absolutely, absolutely. I'll have to get you the uh, the for for whatever you want to do. I'll be sending out uh, the 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 forms and stuff. Um, Callie, we, we'll wait. We'll wait for you to catch up on on Clone Wars and Rebels, and <laughs> but we'll get you on for something. Because if you watch like Andor, because we're gonna be doing reactions to that as well. So if you want to just hop in and be brand new and react to something with us, I I would I'm more than well. You're more than welcome to come do it. Because I want more people that are not so into Star Wars to to see mm-hmm. what me and Tia see um of this world because it is it is Andor fantastic. Would, i think Andor would be cool for you to start because it's um you don't have to know like because this is just about the rebellion yes. the, for the start of the rebellion yes we don't yes. know that story like that either you know nope. Nope. so it's gonna be new for it's us brand as well. new okay. brand new for everybody so yeah, yeah. absolutely nice. but yep so you can that's definitely watch that with us too and you know start that story with us as well it's all right absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. Basically, what what we're all saying is that we're all lit, and you guys need to fuck with us. <laughs> yeah, Everyone, hey, hey. <laughs> so Callie, let's get out of here. Let's get this self care tip. Let's uh, let's let's close out with a bang. I hope it's a dope self care tip that I'm gonna use. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, we will all try to remember to use these um, five tips uh, for if you have to sit down a lot. <laughs> oh, right here. That's my life, and yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> so, number one, ground your feet underneath your knees, not leaning out forward, not not tucked around behind you. Okay. Keep your legs hip distance apart. So, what your hips do, your shoulders do. So, if your hips are all crissy crossy, your shoulders are going to be all crissy crossy too. Oh shit! Okay, no, I, I didn't just, know that. Before. I yeah. that. <laughs> Sit with a tall oh. spine and try to use your core and back muscles. I'm, I'm five foot ma- three. I don't have a tall spine. Maintain yourself <laughs> upright. <laughs> I'm 4'11". Who are you talking to here? <laughs> <laughs> try forest yoga shoulder shrugs. Blah, blah, blah. Say that five times fast. So basically, raise your shoulders up to your ears and clench them and then let them go. And let everything go and lean back into it. And do that like five or 10 times, a few times a day. And tip number five, last but not least, put your head where it belongs, which is on top of your head, not not leaning forward like this, not not like angled forward, but nice and nice and straight on your on your neck like that. All right. So get a neck brace for that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. There you go. <laughs> all right guys that is it for the podcast today today has been one of the f- funnest podcasts i've got to say you guys were great guests i oh, definitely want to have you guys back oh, um awesome man i had a great time please please come back i want to tell you hey, anytime uh, this you guys want you wonderful know, this was um, fun not knocking awesome. anybody else that was on the podcast but this I'm, might be my favorite episode so far. i am <laughs> i, I am one. always down to talk talking all right, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And I'm always so, down nice. to learn about talking. So Peace, guys. I'm there. Check us out, man. <laughs> Voices of Order signing out. Peace. Bye, nice. guys. <laughs>